Hi everybody, this is Randy Suits with today's a letter and a song. Today's letter is the July 26 letter, our, tab tab our Tabernacle in the Wilderness. This is a little bit deeper and a little more lengthy letter. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit, uh, it takes a few more words to express uh, a concept. And so today we're talking about the Old Testament tabernacle in the wilderness. Our tabernacle in the wilderness. The Israelites wandered 40 years in the wilderness because of unbelief and disobedience. Moses spent 40 days and nights on the mountaintop when God wrote the Ten Commandments on two tables of stone. God also showed Moses a plan for a tabernacle of worship for the 12 tribes as they wandered 40 years in the desert. Tabernacle means tent, place of dwelling or sanctuary. Bezaliel, the craftsman, and the women who sewed the skins and woven linens built it to the exact specifications and dimensions given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. The specific layout illustrates God's prescribed way for a man to approach him. Ostensibly, it was a meeting place for the congregation, a place of worship and adoration for a loving God. Actually, it was a foretaste of a spiritual condition that would be instituted and put in place by the death of Christ on the cross and his empowering resurrection on the third day. The tabernacle was designed to move wherever the people moved, for they needed God for their very lives at all times and in all locations, just like we do. Our tabernacle, that is our body, which houses our soul and spirit also requires the life-giving spirit of Father God every moment of every day. The unmatched beauty of a Christian is the inner man of gold and not the outer man or the flesh of dust. In comparison, the tabernacle was covered with porpoise skins. When viewed from the outside, it appeared very common. However, the inside was filled with pure gold and artistic symmetry of the eternal plan of God. It is even so with the life of God's chosen people. Those who receive Christ have an internal beauty which exceeds that of the tabernacle in the wilderness. For the inner beauty of the tabernacle was not visible to those who observed from the outside. In contrast, the redeemed in Christ glow and shine in a world of darkness, exceeding all beauty of the world. It is written, you are the light of the world. The outer court represents our churches where we congregate in worship. In the tabernacle were all the items required for worship, a place of separation, just you and God, a required manner of approach, the instruments of communication, and the presence of the Most High God. The outer court was the place to assemble, like the church building of today. There was only one gate or entrance to the outer court. This door to Christians is Jesus Christ, the way. The tent of the tabernacle consisted of two chambers, the holy place, where we commune and pray to God and the holy of holies, the seat of God most high. The chamber of God was separated from the holy place by a scarlet veil. At the death of Christ on the cross, the veil of Solomon's temple, separating the holy of holies from the holy place, was torn from the top to the bottom. That is, from heaven, it represented from heaven, the home of God, to earth, the home of man, signifying that Christ in resurrection entered into the presence of his Father God. Thus, those in Christ can also enter into the presence of God and are no longer kept from the tree of life, 
by the cherub with the sword, which turns all ways, keeping the way of the tree of life. When we study to show ourselves approved unto God, worship and pray, we are in the holy place, spiritually speaking. When we are in the holy place in Christ, we come into the holy of holies with God the Father. Let us continue to make our home a place where we worship the one true God, who will glorify our tabernacle in the wilderness of our lives. Your friend and companion in Christ, Kohane. So sometimes the deeper things take a little bit of study, but they make sense. You know, if you've never heard the truth before, know this much. When you hear it, you will know it. And no one will be able to dissuade you once you have heard the truth, the revealed truth from the Most High God. And he wants to tell us and teach us all these things, you know. Um, he is a father who, like a father with his son, sets him, his son on his knee and explains to him the things of life that even at a time when he may not understand, he introduces him to many things that will not be revealed until he is able to receive it and accept it. My grandmother was the single greatest force of holiness, righteousness, and truth that led me to the way in Christ. She studied her Bible every day and she knew and understood the word. She was a great example to me and used to be in that day that she would sing all day long. And one of her favorite songs was Danny Boy. She'd be in the kitchen fixing dinner or maybe breakfast uh, and occasionally even, and even lunch. She was singing all the time. But one of her favorite non-Christian songs was Danny Boy. And... Uh, in honor of her memory, I'm going to try to sing this song. It's been a while since I've sung it, but I would sing it to her and uh, occasionally I'd be playing the wrong key, but grandma didn't care and for sure the Lord doesn't care either. We do our best and that's acceptable to the most high. Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From glen to glen and down mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses fall. But come ye back when summer's in the middle, or when the valley's hush and white with snow, or I'll be here in the sunshine, or in the Danny boy, oh Danny boy, I love you so. And when you come, and all the roses dying, if I am dead, as dead I well may be. and find the place where I am lying and kneel and say an Ave there for me and I shall hear those soft dear 
hatred above me and all my grave shall warmer sweeter be for you will bend and tell me that you love me and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet memories of my grandma and for all those dear Christians that have stood in the firm in the pathway of life to lead and guide and direct us by their example and their suffering. I love the Lord today, and I know that you, you do too. Uh, so let's give thanks to the Most High God for the many, many blessings and benefits that he gives us and for the life he gives us from day to day. And now, may the Lord, even the Most High God, be with you in all that you think, say, do, and are. Thank you for being and God willing, we'll see you again soon.